when you look at everything in the world, everything is open to interpretation and interpretation is perception and perception is not truth. It is from the ego belief system and that is based on the uh, interpretations, not facts. And it is based on our separation from God and that we have our own thoughts and we have our own experiences and we suffer. Welcome back to One's Journey of Unwinding the Mind and of course, your daily microdose. Now tune in to the latest episode of One's Journey. Today, I wanna talk about perception. And recently there was a video posted on projection. If you have not watched that, I encourage you to watch it either before or after this because essentially projection makes perception. I first wanna start out with what is perception? And, and what does it matter? What does perception matter? Perception is based on interpretation, not facts. Let me say that again. Perception is based on interpretation, not facts. One, for example, have you ever had an experience with a friend or, or a family member and you literally were a part of the same exact thing and after your recollection of it was completely different? Because perception is based on interpretation, not facts. And our interpretations all are different based on our experiences and based on where we are at in undoing our forgiveness and coming our way back to love. So perception essentially is based on the theory of birth and death, the ego theory, birth and death, founded on scarcity and loss, separation, all of that stuff is what the perception is based off of. And it's the perception of that illusion that we projected that started at the level of the mind. And it's a belief in opposites and that they have separate wills, that my will is different than your will is different than that person's will, that we are all are separate. We all have our own ego agendas, if you could say. But there's a difference. So the perception is ego-based. Perception is all about the ego. But then the Holy Spirit comes in and provides us with what is called knowledge. Knowledge is truth. The law or love of God, it's unalterable and it's eternal, according to the Course in Miracles. It is pure oneness, not separate from God's thoughts. Our thoughts are not separate from God's thoughts. But the problem is we got ourselves in here and now we live in this place of perception and perception is what makes the illusion truth because we interpret what our body interacts with to be truth. When in fact it is just an interpretation. It's perception is just based on interpretation, but when the more and more we make it truth, the more and more we see this illusion to be truth. Instead of seeing through this illusion and seeing the oneness, meaning we all have the same agenda, which is love and forgiveness and getting home, we see all these different agendas. Like the, the homeless person on the street, their agenda is to get food. The, the multi-billionaire's agenda is to buy the next jet, right? We see all these levels of separation when in fact there is truly only one agenda because there's only one here. We are wholly one with God and we have no thoughts that are separate from God. But when we have perception, when we come from a place of perception, then we interpret the illusion based on how our body interacts. And we've talked before, the body was created as like the ultimate separation machine it is the ultimate place in which we believe we reside that is all about separation. It's all about experiencing separation on multiple different levels, whether it's from pain or happiness, from sexual arousal to non-sexual arousal, from black to white, from blonde hair to brown hair, from blue eyes to brown eyes. Like the list goes on. The amount of levels of separation that can be experienced, but only through the perception of the body. Again, perception is based off the ego's thought system of we have birth and death that, you know, we're perceiving it. The one thing we're always perceiving is the active downcline to death from the day of birth. What's the next 
milestone, significant milestone that everybody wants to do things before they get there. And that is death. And that also it is founded on that scarcity and loss and separation. Think of how perception plays a part in your day to day. Recently, I went to the dentist and all my body was perceiving this pain, which really took me out of that ability to be coming from a place of love because let's be honest, I've got more forgiveness lessons to do. So I, it's not a steady state of being there. And the body's perception was able to yank me back out because when the body experiences that th any sort of perception in this illusion that is tied to loss or separation or pain or whatever, it, it pulls us back into that ego belief system. We feel it. That's why Jesus had the ability to be nailed to the cross and laugh because his perception was like, none of this is real. This is an illusion. I see through this. I see past this illusion. I see past the pain. I see through the pain, whatever you want to say, that it's not real. I am not this body. I am the dreamer of the dream. And this is not really happening. His perception was different. It's a function of the body, like I said before. Perception is a function of the body. The body is the one that is always perceiving. You see through your eyes, you hear through your ears. We see things with our eyes in this illusion. We hear things with our ears in this illusion, or so we think. But that, again, is the perception at the level of the ego. That is the perception of separation. That is the perception of differences. All of that, when in fact, when you see through that, past that, to the Holy Spirit, you see the like-mindedness in everyone. You see the mind of the Holy Spirit in all. You're not dismissing the fact of the perception within the illusion, but you're seeing past it. You're able to see past it. That's, again, why Jesus laughed when they nailed him to the cross. He saw past it. So he had a little chuckle because he saw how ridiculous it was, how untrue it was, and how so much truth was held within it. And they say that when people are able to step into the Holy Spirit's belief system and instead of seeing out of the eyes and hearing out of the ears, but seeing through the eyes past them and hearing from the Holy Spirit, they constantly have this smile and, and little chuckle, this little laugh because these extreme things occurring here, they're able to see for what they truly are, which is just a projection of the mind. They're able to perceive it in a different light because they're not necessarily perceiving. They're at the basis of knowledge and knowledge is truth. Again, perception is an outward understanding. If you think about it, the body only allows us to experience what is outside of us. There isn't the constant ability to experience what is within. It's a constant focus on external, what we feel, what we hear, what we see. The five senses are external. They're to interact with the illusion, the projection externally. Again, perception, body, perception, outward understanding. But the thing as well when it comes to perception is we often believe that the body is doing things on its own, tends to feel things on its own, tends to experience things on its own. And one example of this is breath work. Breath work has become very popular today in a method of healing. And there's this belief that by activating breath work, you activate healing through the breath work. And I'm not saying that breath work isn't, there isn't healing that occurs while people are doing breath work. What I'm saying is that it started at the level of the mind, the perception of it, and coming from the Holy Spirit, seeing through it, entering that place beyond your body. Because a lot of times when you're a breath work, you no longer feel the body, you no longer are here, you're in this other place. And I truly believe that other place is a place of the Holy Spirit belief system. So the healing actually happened at the level of the mind. You actually made the decision to go there uh, prior. It's just breath work appeared to be this placebo that was like the catalyst to really allow your mind to expand to that place. 
Same for psychedelics and medications, all that. They're all essentially placebos because everything happens at the level of the mind. But sometimes we need those placebos to allow our mind to step into that other state. And that's okay. I'm not saying they're not okay. But when we continue to believe that the body is doing things on its own, we are still coming from a place of perception and instead of a place of knowledge and understanding that we are one. It is not about the body, it is not about the body experiencing anything here, but instead seeing past the body, seeing through the body, changing our perception to a place of knowledge, which is truth. Knowledge is truth. Again, it is lo- the law or love of God that is unalterable and eternal. And in that state, there's pure oneness where we are not separate. We do not have separate thoughts from God's thoughts. We are one with God. But again, when you enter that place of perception, it is from the ego belief system. And that is based on the interpretations, not facts. And it is based on our separation from God and that we have our own thoughts and we have our own experiences and we suffer. I want to go back to just the piece of perception being an interpretation and not truth. And I want to use the example of the Little Mermaid. If you have not seen the Little Mermaid, in the Little Mermaid, Ariel finds a fork and her little friend Sebastian helps her. Well, not, I don't think it's actually Sebastian. I think it might be the bird, but either way. One of her friends helps her to figure out what the fork is. They call it a dingle hopper. And they show her to use it to brush her hair. And she is 100% on board with this. This is now her brush. Well, it's because her interpretation was different. She doesn't have a past narrative for her interpretation to be that it is a fork to eat your food with. So that is a direct representation that perception is interpretation. It worked, it brushed her hair, but if someone else comes into the picture and be like, no, that's what you eat your food with, aka perception is interpretation. Therefore, it's not truth because truth is universal. Truth is always the same, always consistent, never changing, doesn't have opposites, doesn't experience duality, doesn't have ulterior options of how it to be used. But when you look at everything in the world, Everything is open to interpretation, and interpretation is perception, and perception is not truth. Knowledge is truth, because again, knowledge is the truth, the law, or the love of God that is unalterable, and it is eternal, and it represents the oneness of us all with God and not having separate thoughts from God. That is the only truth here. When you are able to see that, the Holy Spirit then extends The Holy Spirit extends versus the ego sees separate. The Holy Spirit is able to perceive the mind that is in you and is in me and is one. And in all, right? If we are the dreamer of this dream, if you go back to the projection video and we are the dreamer of this dream, then this cup is even a part of it. This cup didn't just walk into my mind. I am projecting it into my mind. Therefore, I am perceiving it as separate from me when in fact, it is one with me. I know this was a lot. And I know even for me, as I explain it, it gets easier and easier the more I talk about it. But it's still definitely a discussion point, a place that will always have understanding at a deeper level. So I encourage you to share your questions, share what this brought new for you in regards to your perception in everyday life and making it choice to instead begin to move from perception to knowledge and to see the truth that lies within this illusion because it's here. I am so grateful for you. I encourage you to go back and watch Projection if you haven't yet. And as always, until next time, remember you are worth it 